Hello and welcome to Avian Specialty Inc.'s Facebook Live event. Today we'll cover grayscale separations out of Photoshop. For this demonstration I'm using a photo that's straight out of the Photoshop demo photos. First I want to get rid of the color. So I'll go up to mode and I'm going to select the grayscale mode so it'll knock out all the color data from the design. There you have it. Next, I'm going to uh, go to the modes again and I'll select LAB. So I could have gone this directly, but uh, I wanted to get rid of the color data. So I'm going directly to LAB mode and I select the lightness channel. The lightness channel holds all the black and white points in the design, no matter even if it has color. So I duplicated the lightness channel and I change it to black. That gives me all my black data. I go back up to lightness channel and this time I go to the menu to the right hand corner of the window and I duplicate from there. This gives me a window that I can actually rename and invert the actual uh, lightness channel. This will give me my white plate. Next, you assign these channels colors. So, obviously, for the white plate, I'm going to change the spot color at about anywhere from 60 to 80 percent uh, coverage, whatever you think you can achieve on the press, and make sure the square is white. I'll go back to the black. This time, I'm changing the actual square to black at about 25 percent opacity, and that gives me a simulation of the black and white on my press. I want to be able to simulate what it'll look like on a t-shirt. So right now I'm creating a channel. It's just going to be a solid black at 100%. And I'm going to name it t-shirt. So created the channel and now I'm going to fill it with black to simulate a black t-shirt. Now I can turn on my panels, my other channels, and see how each looks on top of the uh, black. This enables me to have a visual of my adjustments in curves. I use curves in black and white so I have a smoother transition. Do not use levels. And as you can see I'm using curves to create better detail. This is more of a uh, artist discretion type of thing. I'm turning on the black plate just to see how it affects it. This is a um, optional thing. I'm creating a gray plate. Um, you don't always have to use it. The white and uh, black usually gives you everything you need. But this kind of gives it more richness. So I've actually selected the color I want to try to isolate. For this I use the color range tool in the selection. I also use the lightness copy to make this selection. Once I made that I'm able to open up a new channel and actually load the color only where the gray is. And here I am, I'm going to name it uh, and fill the square with the cool gray 6. You can actually uh, simulate, if you have everything turned on, you can hit one of these, any one of these colors and kind of see how it affects it. Again, a lot of times we end up not even printing the gray if it looks good with, without it. The gray can oftentimes overpower the design, so what I like to do is actually select the gray again, go into curves, and you'll see how I'll actually bring it back just a tad. A little more detail, it'll fall in between the white and the black. Bumping it back just a little bit. Again, this is artist discretion, but you'll get used to it over time. I can turn it all on. It looks a little bit smoother, a little bit nicer, but we still need a highlight. So I duplicated the white plate and I'm really going to drag this baby back. I'm going to just get the super highlights. I'll connect, actually connect it about halfway. Um, and this is also a bit of a discretion. Think about just where you want the white highlight to be, just to bring in some depth. So now when I turn everything on, under base, gray, black, and then the highlight. 
we have a nice design. Thank you for tuning in, and we hope it helps. We'll see you again next week. Aviant Specialty Inks.